David Dobrik has a Model X P100D and how's the lighting? You look great. We're we're gonna go through. We're gonna Thank go you. through the south. <laughs> it's not exactly easy to review a car. There are so many aspects to consider: owning versus leasing, what it's like to drive, performance how it's priced against other cars in the same category, the cargo, what your commute is like, the list goes on. Here's what I did for this review. I rented a fully loaded Tesla Model X during my recent trip to Los Angeles. I drove it every day and got a glimpse of what it would be like to own one. I used an app called Turo for the rental. It's basically Airbnb for cars. And no, Turo is not sponsoring this video. I paid for this rental myself. It was 220 something dollars a day if you're curious. This Model X is the P100D configuration. The P in P100D stands for performance, which is a $20,000 upgrade that includes ludicrous mode, a software tweak that makes the car go zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds, 100 for the size of the battery, 100 kilowatt hours, and D for dual motor drive. It's got a black exterior and interior and these black 22 inch rims, which I think looks sick except apparently they take a toll on range, but I digress. The owner of this Model X went for the seven-seater option, which is actually $3,000 cheaper than the six-seater option that David has, because those two middle seats are motorized, and in the seven-seater option, that middle bench is not motorized. And you've probably heard that Teslas have self-driving features. This 2017 Model X has the full self-driving capability package, a $6,000 option that gets you a handful of autonomous features today, and later this year will recognize and respond to traffic lights and stop signs. In total, this fully loaded Tesla Model X will run you $120,000, which for most people is a lot for a car, let alone anything. So what exactly do you get by giving Tesla $120,000? What is so great about the Model X? Let's start with one of the marquee Tesla features, self-driving. You've probably heard that Teslas can drive themselves. And as it stands in July of 2019, when I'm recording this video, you're kind of right. I want to try and clear the discrepancies between the nuanced phrasing of autopilot and this term self-driving. Autopilot is a system that comes standard on all Teslas in 2019. You can read all about it on Tesla's website. The system has seven active safety features like blind spot monitoring, side collision warning, and automatic emergency braking. This system also includes a few self-driving features, traffic aware cruise control, auto steer, and navigate on autopilot. We're gonna go through each of them. Pull on the stock once to turn on cruise control with traffic awareness, meaning the car will maintain the set speed and slow down and even come to a complete stop if need be, and then take off again. Pulling the stock twice will engage auto steer. This is a step beyond traffic aware cruise control. The car steers itself, It'll stay in its lane in addition to keeping up with the flow of traffic. You'll know auto steer is enabled when the car is surrounded by two blue lines on the digital dashboard. You can adjust how many car lengths you want your car to trail the car in front of you simply by turning the dial on the stock. There's something inexplicably profound feeling the car take over and start driving itself. I can't emphasize it enough. Sitting in the driver's seat and engaging auto steer is an out of this world experience. Auto steer works really well on the highway. It also kind of works on regular streets, but it is not ready for prime time yet. I opted to use auto steer as much as possible during my time with the Model X. And by the end of the trip, I felt more comfortable letting the car drive for me rather than me driving the car. And yeah, that sounds crazy, it's because it is. You do have to keep your hands on the steering wheel, and if you take them off, the car will warn you about every 30 seconds to put pressure on the steering wheel. And if you don't, the car will go kind of crazy with all these warnings and then punish you by disabling auto steer until you put the car in park. One step further than auto steer is navigate on autopilot. If you've input a destination in the nav and you're on the highway and you engage auto steer, it should automatically turn on navigate on autopilot. And you'll know it's on because there's a dialogue that turns blue on the giant touch screen. And then on the digital dash, there's only one singular blue line. Navigate on autopilot works from on-ramp to off-ramp meaning the car will properly merge and take the correct exit. It will also suggest lane changes, and depending on your settings, 
this car can change lanes completely on its own. With Mad Max mode enabled and lane change confirmation disabled, the car tells you it's gonna change lanes and then just does it automatically. It is bananas. Mad Max mode means the car will be more opportunistic with overtaking slower cars. I think this is the best demonstration of the car self-driving capabilities in 2019. Almost no human interaction is required with Navigate on Autopilot, aside from keeping your hands on the steering wheel. When Navigate on Autopilot ends, you're usually kicked back into auto steer, meaning it'll keep its lane and start and stop, but it will not respond to traffic lights, stop signs, or take 90 degree turns yet. Paying $6,000 for that autopilot package also means that the car can parallel park on its own, but I didn't get to try that. There's another autopilot feature called Summon, which basically turns your Model X into a remote control car. David uses this all the time and can explain more. I think we should bring up the Summon feature, okay. which is like one of my favorites. Um, I actually do use this a lot, even though it seems really cheesy. Like when I'm in a parking spot and I'm leaving the parking spot, I'll just hit this forward button and the car starts up, and then it starts moving forward by itself. And um, it'll, it'll stop if there's an obstacle or anything like that. Okay, and you just use that to get out of parking spaces? Um, yeah, so all my friends can enter in so the doors can open like easily and stuff. There's one time I was parked like in the red right there, like you see the red? Yeah. Because all the other spots were taken, and the shop owner was like, it's cool, I'll watch your car. And then one of the spots opened up right in front in the, in the red, and he's like, go move your car, a spot opened up. And I literally just hit it on my phone and I moved the car. And it just rolled up, you're saying? It rolled into the spot and the shop owner was like, what is going? He was so confused because the car was moving by itself. So you can use the summon feature. If you, got, if you got the thing hooked up to your garage, you can back it out of your garage and it'll automatically open the garage and then you can back out or go forward out of the garage. Elon Musk has said, and this is directly on the car's order page, that later this year, 2019, the car will receive a software update that will enable it to recognize and respond to traffic lights and stop signs and enable automatic driving on city streets. Tesla recently released a video of this feature in action and I remember freaking out when I saw this. If or when Tesla does actually roll out this feature, it's later this year or next year, I will definitely try it. Aside from all the autonomous driving features the car has, let's not forget that all Teslas are electric. It's another one of the main features of the car. This Model X P100D has an estimated range of about 240 miles. And obviously that'll vary depending on how much you push the car, how you drive. Tesla has a network of superchargers scattered across the world. 1,500 stations with over 13,000 chargers and more rolling out as we speak. Supercharger Chargers juice your car pretty quickly and are a good option if you're doing a road trip or a long drive and you're in need of a quick refill. I'm sitting on the roof of a parking garage in the middle of Burbank and there's about 15 or 20 superchargers here and there's plenty of Teslas in all these spots. Anyway, I'm at 60 miles left on this battery. It's 513, call it 515. Let's see how quickly we juice up. This is what a supercharger looks like. You grab the plug and this opens up automatically for you and then you kind of just insert it and start charging for you. We're charging at 136 kilowatts per hour and yeah this thing's going pretty fast. So we're getting about 400 miles an hour. So it's been about an hour. It's 6.07 p.m. right now. So about an hour. We have 238 miles in the tank now. This thing charges pretty quickly and the last bit of percentage always takes the longest. So it's got another 25 minutes to fill up like the last five or 10%, but we're good to go. You also have the option to charge the car at your house, like most Tesla owners do, and David does. And when you wake up, your car is fully charged, just like you do with your phone. Where do you charge this? At my house. Every day? Yeah, every night. You plug it in? Sorry. Or, or Natalie plugs it in. No, it's fine. All right, cool. You plug it in or does Natalie plug it in? I plug it in. You plug it in. And, oh. you, and you juice, and when you wake up in the morning, it's always two, what does it say? 260 there, right? No. 240? It's, it's, like two, it's just like 250. Think about it. It's pretty convenient to start your day with your car fully charged. There's a special charger that you can get installed in your house that Tesla offers at the checkout page, but you certainly can just plug it into a regular wall outlet but that's really slow. The superchargers, on the other hand, are really fast 
and getting even faster. Tesla just recently upgraded a few of its supercharging locations to charge vehicles at 1,000 miles an hour. We're talking a full charge somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 minutes rather than like an hour. Though I'll say it's kind of nice to have an excuse to just park the car, chill out, maybe grab a bite or some coffee. You roll up onto a rooftop surrounded by other Teslas. I think it's a good way to even just take a mental break. I felt this unique culture at the supercharging stations. It's kind of like this public water cooler, underground secret nerd cool kids club. If you have a Tesla, you probably know what I mean. I'm not sure exactly how much supercharging costs because the owner of this car gets free supercharging, but from what I understand, it's pennies on the dollar and it is definitely cheaper than gasoline. There's also very little maintenance required with a Tesla because it's electric. There's no oil changes or anything like that. And let's not forget how quick this Model X is. Zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.7 seconds. That is stupid fast for any production car, let alone a seven-seater SUV. There's plenty of convenient automation in the Model X as well. A good example is if you have the key fob in your pocket and you walk up to the driver door, it will automatically open for you, then you press the brake pedal and the door automatically closes. If you walk away from the car, the Bluetooth localization knows that you're leaving and will automatically close the door and lock the car. The key fob has buttons for each door, the trunk and the front, and you can close everything at the same time. It's the small things that you get with a Tesla that start to spoil you very quickly. There's plenty you can do with the phone app, but because I rented the car, I wasn't able to pair my phone to the Model X. That's why I asked David for his help. Does um, it know where your car is at all times? Yeah, so there's a location feature, which is great. I can open that and then it'll show me where my car is. This is good when you're like, when you park your car at an airport or something. How, how close is the accurate, like, how close can you get within a couple feet accuracy? The location's pretty close. And then when you get like somewhat close, you can go over here to controls and then you could just hit honk and then it'll honk for you. Wow, so, okay, so that's cool. That'll be a lot easier to find out where your car is. Then you can open your trunk, which I actually did not know that this was a feature. Can I open it in my trunk? Oh wow, I can literally <laughs> open my trunk. <laughs> can you close your trunk? Oh wow, that's really interesting. Are you gonna use that now? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the car itself. I think the big visual wow factor of the Model X is the Falcon Wing doors. They are just crazy, no matter how you slice it. And they also make a really cool sound when they open and close. There are sensors in the doors that can detect large, hard objects. So if you're parked too close to another car, the Falcon wing doors shouldn't scrape against the other cars. And if you do tap it or it detects something, the doors will automatically stop moving. The interior of the car is pretty standard for a Tesla. Visible leather and carbon fiber everywhere. Lots of black, including the seatbelts. Up front are two displays the digital dash, and this 17-inch gigantic touchscreen that allows you to control every aspect of the car, all the way down to individually heating every seat. Tesla also has programmed a bunch of Easter eggs into the operating system. And one of my favorites is Model Xmas. The car literally puts on a show. The car has built-in LTE for data streaming for things like music, the navigation, the browser. I found LA to be quite spotty in regard to reception and more than once had to wait for the system to stop lagging and then load. It's a minor inconvenience, but an inconvenience nonetheless. I personally find the second display, the one behind the steering wheel, the digital dash, very useful. It only shows you necessary and vital information. And the reason why I'm calling this out is because the X and the S have it and the Model 3 doesn't. There's plenty of space in the Model X. When those seats are folded, there's a lot of room in there. Enough room for two full-size adult humans to lay down. I'm not totally sold on this seven-seater configuration. The six-seater seems like it has more breathing room, and it is kind of tight in that last row when that middle seat is upright. The interior of the car is very minimalist. There's basically nothing in it which gives it this really clean look. The Model X has a 17 speaker sound system that I think could sound better. It just doesn't ever really feel that full. As for actually driving the Model X, 
It's like a spaceship on wheels. The car is more or less silent. It's comfortable. The car can drive for you. It's really fast. And the windshield is the largest piece of curved glass found on any production car. The panoramic view of your surroundings is something so unique to Tesla. You just have to experience it to understand. A couple of other things quickly worth mentioning, the height of the car can be customized in the software on the touchscreen. You can adjust it to be very low or very high, and the car will remember where you have these settings. So if your driveway or parking garage has a huge dip, the car will automatically adjust to compensate. The Model X is rated to tow 5,000 pounds. There's a video of a Model X towing an airplane. Weird flex, but okay. Out of every car I've ever driven, I can confidently say the Model X is by far my favorite. Why? The panoramic windshield, the Falcon wing doors, the performance, the self-driving capabilities. I think the Model X has the best of everything that Tesla currently has to offer. For a premium, of course. And I think that's exactly what the Model X is. A premium SUV. The most advanced, quickest SUV money can buy. It's awesome. When you buy a Tesla, you're buying into an ecosystem. Think about it, it's more than a car. It's a piece of tech that improves over time thanks to over-the-air software updates, very similar to your phone or computer. Like dog mode, for example, just rolled out. It keeps your pets cold while you run errands. That's cool. Teslas are also extremely safe. The Model X is the first SUV to ever receive a five-star crash rating across the board. The entire Tesla lineup has the lowest probability of injury, according to the NHTSA. That is something to consider when you're buying one of these vehicles. I don't need a car in my life right now because I live in Manhattan, but if I were to buy a car, I would definitely save up for a Model X. Everyone that I know that has one loves it. And I think if any of you watching this video ends up buying a Model X, It'll be one of the best purchases you ever make. Model X owners, please sound off in the comments and let me know what you love or what you don't love about your car. And to everyone else, thumbs up the video if you learned something. And David, thank you for helping me review the Model X. If you like the video you just watched, a subscription would be appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching.